construction projects. Someone with a passion for both construction engineering and ancient archaeology. A qualified engineer with an interest in Stonehenge, Rick Smales. I got interested in archaeology and ancient construction primarily based on my background in construction and my love of history. And I was always curious, like most folks are, well, how did they do that? Modern American construction projects may be 4,000 years and an ocean away from Stonehenge. And the tools they use just couldn't be more different. But the basic principles bridge the centuries between them. Well, the first thing that we would look at is the actual site itself. Now, in a normal construction project, when the project is finished, we have as-built drawings that identify everything that was put into the project. In the case of Stonehenge, we obviously don't have the drawings, but we have the actual structure itself. Using Stonehenge's structure as a project blueprint, Smales works backwards to the basic steps required for such a construction task. Step one, get the construction materials to the building site. Step two, work out how to use those materials to create the structure. Step three, calculate how much labor all this involves. Using Smale's three steps, it may be possible to work out how Stonehenge was built. Our first step, getting the materials. The 40-ton sarsen stones are relatively easy. They are believed to have been brought to Stonehenge from a site about 20 miles away. How did ancient Britons move such massive weights? A decade ago, a team of engineers tried to solve this problem. With the help of volunteers, a wooden sled and a lot of grease, they moved a 40-ton rock a few hundred feet, a small distance compared to the 20 miles that the ancient Britons faced. Even trickier would have been getting those blue stones 240 miles from the place where they were quarried in the mountains of South Wales to Salisbury Plain. It's something Robin Heath has a theory about. Well, as an engineer, you want to get the stones onto water quickly. In prehistoric times, if you could have got it down to the Clethi River, three miles away, you've then got water at most of the way to Stonehenge. Could Stone Age people possibly have had the technology to carry these four-ton rocks over water? And can a test be devised to see if such a feat was truly possible? A boat needs to be built, but what type? Archaeological evidence suggests that people from the Stonehenge era used a variety of different types of boats. The most common were log boats, a type of dugout canoe cut from an oak tree. Is it possible that these log boats could carry the sort of heavy stones required in the construction of Stonehenge? An unusual discovery at Shardlow Quarry in England's Midlands in 1998 offers evidence that they could. When a flood washed away the mud from what appeared to be an old tree stump, something unusual appeared. Where a river had once been, emerged the remains of an ancient Bronze Age log boat. Even more interestingly, the boat was carrying an unexpected payload, more than half a tonne of quarried rock. So, a log boat seems the logical choice for this rock-carrying demonstration. And that would require a very large tree. Fortunately, some foresters are culling some older oak trees from a hardwood forest. Perfect to make the log boat.
Now there is a log, it needs to be sculpted into a boat. Ancient woodwork expert Damien Goodburn takes up this challenge. What we're setting out to do here, to, to make a, a vessel that will carry the stones with the maximum buoyancy and reasonable stability, is to take a pair of dugout boats and link them together with a simple platform of poles, and then the stone will be something like that. So that's our aim. The practicalities of it may be quite difficult, but that's what we, we reckon should work. With the right tools for the job and help from some friends, Goodburn thinks the boat can be ready in a fortnight. Wind your fingers. The team shows that the technology of the time would have worked. But completing the whole boat by hand is, while authentic, also time-consuming. To speed up the process, chainsaws are called in. The boat's construction is well underway. It's almost ready for its two greatest tests. Will it float? And can it carry a Stonehenge-sized stone? Assuming the boat floats, it now needs a very large rock. Because the Preseli Mountain is a protected national park, a boulder the same size and weight as the blue stones is blasted out from this granite quarry. A substantial crane lowers the massive weight onto a sled at the boatyard. The team suddenly realises what an immense task they've taken on. It's clearly going to be too much to balance such a load on one finished log boat. To make it work, another log boat built by Damien 14 years ago is standing by. If the team doesn't get the boat finished soon, they will miss the high tide, essential for launching the heavy weight of the boat. The plan is to lever the boat over oiled skids and slide and pivot it down to the water's edge. It's a nice idea in theory, but in practice it seems Goodburn may have underestimated the weight not just of the stone, but of the boat. One, two, three. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> Eventually, with some extra effort, the log boat begins to gather some momentum. Keep pulling, that's it, stop. Right. But not for long. The team is worried about the jetty not holding up under the one-ton weight of the boat. These? Uh-oh, just down. fairly rotten three by twos, and I'm not sure that's going to take a ton weight. Never had this trouble in the Bronze Age. It wasn't any sore point. One, two, three! Ah! Are you pulling? Uh, no, we were pushing on these ropes, that's why they... <laughs>